I wanted to share with you my daughter Sophie's latest painting. Isn't it absolutely gorgeous? Hi friends, it's Lisa. This is Life with Fife, a podcast where we talk about knitting, creativity, spirituality, creating a more authentic life through our knitting, through connecting with our creative impulses, um, sometimes I talk about books. Often I talk about great knitters that have come before us that have led the way for us to, to kind of find our footing in knitting, so to speak, like Elizabeth Zimmerman. Um, but it is a place first and foremost for us to come together to allow the space for our creative impulses to kind of just breathe and for us to connect with those impulses and to figure out what it is that we want to move forward with and to be inspired and to feel that creativity is a priority in our life. So if that sounds like you, and I hope it does, please like and subscribe and become part of this community. So today, before we get started with knitting, and I'm, I'm working on this, um, isn't this color just the most gorgeous? I'm so not someone who uses bright colors like this, but I just fell in love with this. This is Lantana. The color is Lantana by Canopy Fingering um, at the Fiber Company. And I'm, it's, a, it's a beautiful blend of merino, um, alpaca, and a little bit of bamboo. So it's so soft. And I'll be talking about what I'm doing with this. But before we get into um, the knitting today, I wanted to share with you this new book that came out by Rick Rubin. Rick Rubin is a music producer who most recently was on, um, he had a television, he had a series on Apple TV about Paul McCartney, where he interviews Paul McCartney about his creative process. And it was so great. I watched it. Um, I actually, I didn't have Apple TV, but it was, I, I got Apple TV for that reason <laughs> because I wanted to see this so badly. It was also like, it was, a, I wanted to see the Beatles special and then I wanted to see this afterwards. And I thought it was so great. And I know him from, you know, back in the nineties when he used to produce the Beastie Boys. And of course my favorite Krishna Das, he did one of his albums and He's someone who just seems to be able to allow artists to lean into their authenticity and what it is that is fueling their creativity. And he just opens them up in a way. He's a, somehow his the relationship he develops with the artists allows them to open up in a way and to kind of just allow their creativity to flow and create an amazing product. So, so many, so much of the music that I love was produced by Rick Rubin. And he's come, because of this work that he's done with the Beatles, he's come more in the forefront. Um, and so when I saw that he had this book, I was really excited. And I downloaded it immediately on Audible. As I always do when I'm knitting, I have my, my books that I listen to while I'm knitting. And I'm, so overwhelmed with the beauty of this book. But before I get into the details about that book, I'm just going to share with you another thing that I have been doing. And another thing that I decided to try, which I've heard for a, for a, I've heard about for a while and wasn't sure if it was something that I wanted to do and it's the waking up app by Sam Harris. Sam Harris is another brilliant person in this world who um, I don't agree with everything all the time, but I what I so appreciate from him is his willingness to discuss things and topics and issues that are happening in the world currently in such a thoughtful and uh, deep, deep, close, close look at these things, really serious look at these things. And so he takes conversations that are often, you know, volatile and filled with emotion and filled with opinion. And he kind of drills them down into like factual, as factual as possible. And he brings down the level of noise and allows you to kind of just, and brings in experts, like true, true experts. Um, I've heard He's had so many amazing people on his podcast. I've heard that was uh, most recently where I heard David White 
I'd heard of David White and I know his poetry, but it was just so nice to hear a conversation with, with David White. And it's such a, a deep conversation. So if you like deep conversations, his podcast is called the Making Sense Podcast. It's great, totally. A, um, but he also has, he's, Sam is a long time before he was, he, Sam is a neurophysicist. And um, before he, he was educated at Stanford University and he took a break when he was in his undergrad years um, to spend time in India and uh, has a deep interest in spirituality as well as uh, intellectual issues. And so he has also something called the Waking Up app, which is really, uh, I've, I've wanted to look at it for a long time and I've kind of been like, I don't know if I really, is it gonna be something that's worth my time and money because it isn't free, but he has a free one month trial right now going on. So I downloaded the Waking Up app and it's so much more than I expected and I should have known because he's such a, Sam Harris over delivers. <laughs> so it's filled with conversations with people from uh, all kinds of meditators and it's about mindfulness and, the import, how it affects there's the the science about meditation then there's the um then there's the commentary about society and meditation and spiritual thought and conversation about the spiritual path by people who have been walking that path for many many years uh Joseph Goldstein Steam. is on there. Many other Tibetan Buddhist meditators are on there. So I was really impressed with the lineup that he had on there. So I have that. And it's just my, you know, it's my intention to just spend more time in this space of, of considering what it is that is trying to emerge in my life. And, and on that note, my Rick Rubin book, which I listened to, and it was so, get as I was saying just before this, it's so beautifully produced that listening to it is almost like a meditation because he has, you know, the sound gongs introducing each chapter and each chapter, how I'm listening to it is I just listen to the chapter and I stop it and I just kind of allow the thoughts as I'm knitting. I just kind of think about what he was talking about. And so he was talking about creativity as part of the what makes the world move, what what creates the universe, that the universe is almost like what holds the universe together and makes it function well is the creative impulse. And um, I don't think he puts it that way, but that's my interpretation of it. And so it's, it's out there, create, everything is creative, whether you are ruminating on a problem at work and come up with some unique way to approach it, whether you are having a conversation or an argument with your spouse and you come up with a loving way to say what it is that you really feel in your heart that kind of eases the situation, whether it's um, knitting a sweater and, and thinking about a color that you want to incorporate and how you might want to incorporate that, whether, so it doesn't necessarily have to be quote unquote creative, that each of us are creative. And I've talked about this, I've said some version of this here, that each of us are creative in our own unique way and that our lives are a creation, that literally everything in our lives is the result of a past action and a past thought. So we've created everything in our lives for good or ill. And so to be consciously creative and to sort of understand that and then to also realize what he talks about which i thought was kind of really amazing was he said that it's not us you know that the create the, the ideas do not come from us that the ideas come from this creative impulse that is the universe itself and that there is a time for all ideas there's a time for things and he quotes that that beautiful passage in uh, in the new testament about you know, there's a season for this. It was a song that the birds sang as well. Um, a time and a season for everything. There's a time for love. There's a time for hate. There's a time for war. There's a time for peace. There's a time for building. There's a time for destruction. There's a time for all of these things. And that creative ideas also have their time. And so that by being open and being receptive and allowing by not being attached to the outcome, by allowing creative ideas to kind of just come through us and to sort of grasp onto what seems right for us, 
that's the whole thing. That's what I kind of, that's at least the first part that he's talking about. And so um, that idea was just like enough for me today. I'm going to be doing a little bit of reading this, you know, maybe day by day and then allowing it to kind of just letting the words marinate in my in my soul kind of to just allow it to sink in and um and move forward with that and he talks about how creativity also is kind of like solutions to problems and that often by putting something down and walking away from it and allowing our creative our subconscious mind to work on things that we often will come up with an answer and that has happened i'm sure most of us here that knit um know what it's like when we get frustrated with a project and we put it away and we just you know we call it hibernation put it away and then maybe at some point in the future we pick it up and we're able to find you know find some way to work around that project or some new idea we see it with fresh eyes we see it as a completely different way that we see it in a different in a completely different way than we did when we were working on it and we got frustrated so it's just all about the process and um, and I so appreciated that. So I wanted to share that with you. And speaking of the creative process, what I'm working on here is, um, it's, it's hard to tell in this light, it's not really great, but it's, I have a, basically I'm making, I wanted to do something I've worked on recently to very, not complex, but kind of very, pattern E types of projects where I was following a pattern the entire time and um and it was it took a long time and they were it wasn't it's not that it was hard so much as it was just it just took a lot of time of a lot of my time and a lot of my my mental focus and I wanted some I wanted something excuse me something that was easy and that was kind of seamless literally seamless and that had lots and lots of stock in it so I could just knit mindlessly and listen to books. And um, and so what I came up with was this idea of a dolman sleeve um, pullover with a boat neck. I was I was looking on, um, do, you, do any of you get ads for this company called The Reset? And it's, um, they have, they have, they have, it's nice clothes, right? They have nice clothes professional type clothing and um but very very kind of minimalist and modern and and um not overly so very you know very contemporary but just uh very simple and really nice lines and really good nice cut and it looks um uh, very it looks elegant because of the cut and the simplicity of it so there was a sweater there that was like a dolman and it was a, a, a dolman boat neck and I was like I could probably figure out how to do that and I'm gonna see if I can you know because I don't want to spend $300 on a sweater that I know I can knit myself do you do that too like look at sweaters and be like I'm not gonna buy this sweater I can knit it myself so that was the th that was the thinking behind this and um so of course elizabeth zimmerman has you know she has a she has a way to do everything so i'm following her pattern which is to knit a tube and as you knit the tube up but but this time because it's a dolman i'm knitting more of like i'm increasing on the sides so i'm kind of creating like this kind of shape and then i'm going to want to get to the shoulder height i'm going to you know um seam off on either shoulder uh, seams for a steak, and then I'm going to knit the shoulder, knit the sleeves, and I'm thinking I might do a contrasting color, like something. I have a really be blue, beautiful blue mohair that might be really pretty for the um, for the lower sleeve. So this is going to be a drop shoulder dolman, and then I'm going to do a lace kind of three quarter panel on that will be tight on on the elbow will like come down. So it'd be a little longer than a three quarter, but basically a three quarter sleeve, like a dolman that gets like, is very baggy, but then comes very tight on the arm with this lace pattern in a contrasting blue color. So that's my idea. And um, I'm just, I just got to find that yarn now. <laughs> I know I have it here. I just don't know where it is, but uh, so I think I have a way to do it and um, I've been watching some videos by other knitters about how to do it's called a Norwegian drop sleeve and Elizabeth does she gives instruct she gives a visual but she doesn't really give instructions 
So I have found someone who did do this with a child sweater and it looked pretty doable. So I'm gonna do that. Uh, so you make the sleeves first, you cut down for the steak for the shoulders, and then you, um, you know, you, you cut the steak and then you, um, so you kind of sew up the sleeve onto the, onto the shoulder. So I'm really excited to do that. And, um, that's where I'm at with my knitting and I will be back because I want to show you some, I'm going to be taking some videos. My son and I are going to be doing some Nordic skiing and I wanted to show you what that looks like out in our backyard in this beautiful snowstorm. But today the, the snow is really, really soft and deep. We've got about a foot and a half of snow and it's still snowing. So we're hoping that tomorrow it will be a little bit more uh, crispy snow, kind of like a little more hardly more packed and better for that kind of thing. So I will be posting that video here. So hang on and take a look. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 